Well, greetings again, everyone. Nick, Mike Lack, and Steve Fraser returning. Hello again. We're doing Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. New Beginning. It's uh, all fresh and new. The first franchise to tell you it's all over, and then they switch it up on you. It's a swerve, bro. <laughs> anyway, guys, audio commentary only. So uh, you guys got your own copy of the film. Hit the time, time stamp to zero. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Please hit the time stamp to zero and hit play now. Old scratchy Paramount Gulf and Western logo there. This is not a Blu-ray copy, correct? No, this it's is not. A, the DVD. Have they done? Box did it. they? Did they do Blu-rays for these? Yeah, I think after Part Four, they kind of like did like uh, paired them up. A oh, like combos. Disc. Yeah. I like that we just start off right away. Yeah. It's woods and dark and. Yeah. Yellow was quite the popular color for a raincoat yeah. back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I might have had one. I'm like, if raincoat, then yellow. That was just yeah, the way it, it was. I don't know why. Like, it's it's such an abrasive color. For, yeah. Maybe because it's... Sti I, it sticks out in your wardrobe. You know yeah. what you're looking for. He's waiting for his review. I don't want, to, <laughs> don't want to talk about it until he shows up on screen here. But think about this. This is very evocative of like the opening of the next movie, too. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Good old Corey. Corey Feldman. I can't, I can't do the whole movie. I'm working with Richard Donner on a movie right now, Goonies. I'll come in for a day. Well, they're also, I mean, you. we both know, we've seen yeah. the movie, we know there isn't really a need for, yeah. you know, 15-year-old. Well, I'm sure 15 -year -old. Had, had they been able to secure him for the whole film, they'd probably have written a completely different script. Possibly. I suppose. I suppose. So after Friday the 13th, his star, his star part really kind of started getting traction and everything, so. Maybe because of Goonies, I don't know. Well, but he, yeah, he, I don't know. He, he, was, he was really... Freaking everything. Yeah. Well, he was in Gremlins, too, yeah. so... Yeah. So that was something Spielberg and Donner and everything, so... He was on the right track for a while. Who just decides they want to dig up a body? <laughs> Good old Saturday night action right now, there. Now, I'd Friday like to know... Action. Look at this. This headstone has just got, like, a yeah. chalk name written on it. <laughs> How, why isn't he buried on the side of the road next to his mom? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that it's just, you know, an old pine box. That's yeah. that's pretty accurate, probably. It's about as much money as uh, the state Crystal Lake would yeah. bother with. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he was only buried about one foot deep, not six. <laughs> it's like, ah, shallow ground. Maybe not even a foot. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's like... It's six inches. <laughs> Obviously, they were the way they were kicking dirt around there. It seemed like he was only buried about twenty minutes ago. Yeah. It's got a nice production quality just put into this opening sequence. You got all the rain and everything going on. Yeah, I mean it's an ominous feel. Yeah, it's it's actually quite good. These worms always freak me out. Yeah. He just had an awl in his hand? Is that what that was? <laughs> Looks like it. They, maybe they're using the, pry the thing open? I don't know. What a great visual. Yeah. He steps out of the grave. I believe this is stuntman Tom Morga. He did, uh, he did a lot of stuff. He yeah. Did, I know he did a lot of uh, stunt work on Star Trek movies double Leonard Nimoy in the first film or something like that so there's yeah I like Morgan he's, he's been through a, he's done a whole lot of stuff and he is that tall he's a tall fella 
He makes his way around the That's convention was, circuit. Because he was originally, in Halloween 4, cast as Michael Myers, but Mustafa Akkad didn't like what he was doing with the character and kicked him off. Oh. And they recast with George Wilbur. I knew I talked about it sometime kind of, last Kind year. of interesting that, uh, you know, you got to work and play both of those iconic yeah. characters. Yeah. I don't think anyone else has gotten that chance. Uh, well. No. What's his, uh, the guy that directed Seven, Beekler? Beekler. He worked on one of the Halloween films, I believe. Yeah, and, and, the, and the Nightmare film. And the Night, so he yeah. worked on all three. Yeah, his makeup effects work. And, whoa, it's just a dream! <laughs> Uh, hello, oh, hello, gotcha. Hello, John Shepard. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh. He, after this film, he uh, did nothing. No, he oh. he became religious and kind of oh. uh, told all these types of films for the next, the next thirty years. So, but it's a good likeness to like uh for what you would think Corey Feldman might look would have like turned 10 out. Years, well, yeah, despite I the mean, fact that he doesn't like. He looks Get any he, taller. He looks, he looks a lot any better. Taller. This guy looks a lot better than what Ship or what uh, Feldman turned out to look like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so mental illness got it. He's a psycho. Mm -hmm. He was locked up. Mm -hmm. Classic. Now notice the yeah, uh, they even the put mask. the blue. They put the blue yeah. on the mask here. Yeah. And we're in. What 1985? This 85. is this is like the beginning of the home video rental. Yeah, this is right. Boom. This is right in there. And so, I imagine that at this point, perhaps you have just gone out and rented part four. Yeah, because there's no. This is the first one with no recap. Right. Right, because you probably had a sleepover and rented part four yeah. just before you all mm -hmm. went out to watch this one. Yeah. Or snuck in to watch this one. Yeah. <laughs> So I imagine that you'd go, gee, that mask doesn't look quite right. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, because you, you haven't been introduced to it yet. You don't, you saw the dream sequence with the classic mask. Right, and right, and it was correct in mm -hmm. the dream sequence. So mm -hmm. special appearance. Court, you're done. That's you're it. Done. That's it. He got paid for four and a half minutes to stand there and look <laughs> scared in the rain. <laughs> Manfredini. Easiest paycheck ever. I love Harry Manfredini. <laughs> It was interesting with the, the the director of the film, Danny Steinman, because he made a really fantastic film before this that he kind of jumped on late called Savage Street with Linda Blair. Not familiar. Oh, it's a fantastic thing. She, Linda Blair with a crossbow, cro, crossbow killing dudes. Okay, I'm down. It's, it's a rave revenge film, like exploitation all the way. But uh, he came on that film late and did a fantastic job with it. And I guess he'd done pornography or something? Shot and been like... Porn director or something, so everybody's got to start somewhere. He's go somewhere. He passed away a few years ago. They have a sheep. <laughs> nice little petting zoo for the uh, crazy farm. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love <laughs> the. Higher, well, I mean, this this film is so different than the other ones in, oh, yeah. in so many ways, and I mean, I guess we should just point out right now how everybody seems to hit shit on this film. Yes, people really don't like this one. It's one of my favorites. I feel it's a tad bit of the Halloween three syndrome. A little bit that, that you're shifting gears in the not not as severe as Halloween three, but you're still. You don't actually have Jason in the film. You're kind of swerving to a different place. You're, you're hinting in a different direction for the franchise without Jason altogether. It's a good transition piece yeah. if, if you're going to you know, yeah. go that way. Um, but even as I've pointed out in previous commentaries, mm -hmm. the death count is like a triple of previous. Yeah, it, it keeps kicking up all the time. Well, I, it's like... You know, the first film had six, and then the second one had five, and yeah. then the next one had six. And this one's got, like, 27. <laughs> We've already seen there, two there, in that opening dream sequence. This really sequence. likes to indulge itself. In I love it. I love it. And, lots you know, of gore, a little bit of cheesiness to go along with things. As a kid, you know, all I wanted to do was just watch people die. <laughs> like, that was the entertain. <laughs> like, Jason killing people by this point. <laughs> He 
He's a easy on the eyes. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> oh, and there's a oh. sleaze. Always got to be one. Keep door closed. Must be weird. I mean, putting yourself in his his shoes to like show up at this camp almost. Of, it's a fair allegory to it, yeah. You know, that's a basically a mental institution in the wild. Yeah. Kind of a halfway house type of yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll say John Shepard does a fine job in this film. Well, I mean, yeah, if you just have to kind of look despite, sulky and, yeah. you know. I mean, well, sometimes when he has, like, the hallucination and whatnot, he sells it very, very well, as we'll yeah. see later on. But, but yeah, I don't think he has a ton of acting credits to his name. I haven't checked his filmography in a long time, but I don't think he had, he was like a regularly working actor or whatnot. He probably went into it, kind of dipped out or something, I don't know. This picture of a walrus on the back wall there. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the art direction here. There's some sort of Godzilla lobby card, <laughs> apes, all sorts of wildlife. Yeah. PSA for child abuse. <laughs> oh. I mean, I guess was, that, that would make sense. Yeah. John Lennon photo. The left, one with the New York yeah. shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty famous pick. Yeah. What's he got? D Valium, Darvon. Hmm. He looks like he's on Valium. Oh, Gordon. Oh, nice. Poor Gordon. <laughs> nice promo pick from the film. Did they give a time frame here? They didn't. Did they? I don't. I haven't seen one yet. I think fans do a lot of speculation about how much time has passed between all these films. Because obviously there's big. Well, I guess big time jets between four and five, and maybe less of one between this one and Jason Lives. I guess the difference between four and five makes up for the idea that the three previous all took place over the same yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> the same. <laughs> 72 hour yeah. span. So, like into part four, we're still in like 1982 or something or whatever the heck right, it was. Right, right. And now it's actually, you know, mid to late 80. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, he's not yeah. just three years older. Yeah. Like, th th this is like, if Corey was, say, I don't know, 11, 11 years old, somewhere around there, this is probably more close to like 16, 17 at least. Well, he looks like he's 25. Oh, I'm sure he was. <laughs> but every. Everyone in in the eighties who played a teenager looked about well, twenty five. Sure. Oh, Reggie! I, I know I've seen him in something else. I never end up looking it up. Yeah, he's I, one of those. You're like, oh, I feel I, like maybe like Silver Spoons or something like that. Something. Some TV show or something at the time. There's one of the famous masks. I'm sure that's <laughs> a Tom Savini. And probably sitting in storage from the last film. Still got a little bit of that something in there. I never understood the uh, the hair choice on on this on young Reggie with oh. the with the line yeah. shaved into the the side of the head, almost like an axe wound. Yeah. <laughs> Jason resurrected. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is that necessary? What do you what I, statement are you making, sir? Yeah, I don't know. Solid. I say solid all the time. It's not, I don't, maybe it's a subconscious shout out to Reggie the Reckless, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he 
Is that a glasses holder in his pocket? I guess so, yeah. He's not wearing his glasses now. I forget his name, but yeah, he that dude the dude in the back and everything is a little tough motherfucker, ain't he? <laughs> Gotta taste the axe to him later. I love cop cars from the 80s. Yeah. I love cop cars. They're straight out of Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> it's in my top ten. I only need a good old firebird roaming around. <laughs> Caps straight out of central casting here. Mm -hmm. It would be so cool if just Burt Reynolds showed up in a Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> <laughs> Frisky teens. Well, you're wondering, or some of these people seem like they're completely well adjusted. What the yeah, why are, they, why are these people at a mental institution? Yeah. I mean, I guess they're right. The script we ran out of mental mental conditions. Oh, here we go. These may be Backwoods Hicks, the greatest characters in the history of this <laughs> franchise. They're probably the, the most over the top. I love this woman. <laughs> I is she still alive? Do we? Oh, I could check. Yeah, because I do the convention thing. I want to meet this woman. <laughs> so Hubbard. <laughs> <coughs> she is still alive. She is seventy-six years old. Good for her. Oh, well, she appeared in a film with Burt Reynolds. Did she? Well, there we it go. all We're comes all... full circle. Like three films, actually. She was in Sharky's Machine. A whole bunch of other ones, so everything comes back around. We're like precognition here. Yeah. I love these two. <laughs> they are the highlight of the film for me. She could come back in the, in the next remake and play Mrs. Voorhees. She certainly could. We don't need a Mrs. Voorhees. <laughs> no. no, we don't. We don't need another remake. No, <laughs> we don't. We don't. But they're gonna try. I'm of course they've they been are. trying for a long time. They can't get it. You know anywhere. that that new one that they remade in '09 ish. I it's not bad. Well, I that, I kind of like it. Of the platinum dune stuff is is it's on the better side of things. We won't t talk about the lower side of things. <laughs> no. The films that will not be named. Yeah, I completely agree with you that most of these individuals don't look like they belong in this yeah. particular they, facility. They look like more camp counselors, really. They feel like the exact same stuff you've seen in the last four films. Except for this dude. He, looks, he, should, he should be locked up in a prison right now, not here. Of course, he will be locked up somewhere soon. This guy's wonderful, isn't he? <laughs> Is he not just yeah. amazing? No, who per walks up to this guy and say, I want him to be my friend? Well, this man is obviously <laughs> mentally retarded. Oh, yeah, he's... Or deficient in some way. Yeah. Oh, Tiffany Helm. He's just a sweet man. Mm -hmm. Look at this. He, all he wants to do is share his candy bar. <laughs> Look at that Walkman. Oh, Woo. yeah, man. That whole outfit. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> well, you got a croquet set there. I don't know if I ever noticed that. Huh. don't remember that they actually used that to kill anyone in the film, though. That, that would have been a nice idea. That's a big old mallet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are they so angry at this man? All he wants to do is help. She was angry that second. She does look a lot like her mother. Yeah, <laughs> she does. From uh, Dream Warriors and Dream Master. Yeah, I got the chance to meet Brooke Bundy. Yeah. And she was a delightful woman. <laughs> I 
So we're going to get her to do a, a part four or whatnot instead of Tuesday That night. would have been a great... She looks much she more looks like our cat. Yeah. I, he's so sweet. I love him. <laughs> what a great character. <laughs> Enjoy him while he lasts. Well, he's got two <laughs> chocolate bars. And all, all he wants to do is share a chocolate bar. <laughs> How old is Vic? 40? <laughs> <laughs> Fair bit like it. <laughs> it belongs in some place for the criminally insane. <laughs> really love it here. He did, he did he say it. in there that he was an orphan, <laughs> ah, um, which maybe. is a nice tip off to later on. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I could see that that personality having that reaction to that <laughs> yeah. personality right there. Yeah. Oh, what a waste of a good candy bar. <laughs> Town. Nice camera sweet, work. Sweet I like the, Joey. Like, I like the camera work there. That they don't uh, like exploit his death by making it gory. Well, they no. They just make the, just tap into the shock of it all. They do it for every other death in this yeah. film, but that one they don't. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice bit of restraint there. I like that. Doesn't even look like he's cuffed. He's just sitting in the back seat. He looks like he could be his brother. <laughs> And why would they let all these other people just kind of stand around? Mm. Like, how are how are these people like the two girls and Tommy? You know. Tommy on the on the porch. Yeah. There's just this big bloody mess in the in the front yard. Yeah. A little bit more backstory there. Mm-hmm. And what is his name? Do we know his name? Is that, uh, look at that, the arm. Roy Burns is the name of the character. The actor, I'm not sure. Another sleaze. Yeah. He's giving the evil, the, the stink eye there, of sorts. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on. <laughs> We never see this this blonde dude again, man. No, I don't you, think we do. You think it'd be like the first guy he kills, like I would love this asshole. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, there you go. That's it. Uh, he's he the changed. Killer. He's right in that moment. His eyes should turn green or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> go Bixby. <laughs> <coughs> it would really tip his hand, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> These guys look like they're fifties greasers or something. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and again, who are they? Why are they here? Mm. They have no story other have, than no. the, they, other than just to they, get killed. Let's pat out the runtime with a few more kills. I mean, they're basically yeah. a married couple who's arguing. <laughs> I mean, if these two aren't lovers, I don't know. What, I don't know what they are. I mean, and that's fine. I just. <laughs> he looks familiar. I won't work on the engine. I mean, he's, he, he's got this hat. Yeah, it looks like this Brando in the wild. It looks like Brando in the wild one or something. He's got to take a crap. I got to take a crap in the woods. I'm sorry, no. I'm not doing it. No. Especially when, what are you supposed to wipe with? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Leaves? 
Yeah, and I don't think so. I'm going to get a rash on my ass. I don't think so. Poison ivy. Don't think so. You could use that hat. <laughs> Long stroll, Annie. Yeah, you only have to go a couple of yards go. into the into the bush. Ten, ten steps into there, and you're done. He's taking like fifty. And I mean, this is quite a path that he's walking yeah. on too. Like, oh, there you go. Wipe your ass with a rabbit. <laughs> The old road flare. Oh, here we go. Yeah. What are you doing here, <laughs> They're like, these two people are from, like, New Jersey. <laughs> He's definitely familiar. I'm trying to figure out from what. Right in the mouth. <laughs> Love it. Even the, the style of killing in this film is so <laughs> different than, than the others. And you're right. That was a, it was a quick crap. Who knows? Who knows what <laughs> nice what the wipe there. was? <laughs> the hand washing situation is obviously oh, yeah. non-existent. <laughs> there, I don't know what the obsession is with people singing in this film. <laughs> We're getting. Yeah, I've got to the best part though. No, oh. the porta potty scene. Oh yeah, demon. The best thing in the film, man. I'm gonna argue that the old lady neighbor is the best film thing in the well, film, but cl the, close second. And he was just hanging out in the back, just hanging around. These two poor gay kids from Jersey break <laughs> down, break down in the woods, <laughs> and they get killed for their efforts. Interesting transition there. Like, yeah. that entire scene was completely unnecessary. Yeah. And they just faded out and then faded back in to yeah. this. And that would have... Like, when I think of this movie, I actually mm -hmm. think of, like, watching it on TV as mm -hmm. a kid. And that would have clearly been a commercial break. Oh, absolutely. And so, it's weird. It's almost like they wrote this movie as a made-for-TV <laughs> production. <laughs> He's ripped, man. Yeah, Look no that. kidding. Look at that. When did he have time to work out? <laughs> I always find that really annoying in films. Like, as soon as you take the pill, all, all, now you're fine. Right. There's no wait time. It's No, no, no. Range. It takes a half hour. So. Oh, yeah. It's just... It's <laughs> trouble. That oh. was good, though, with the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The hallucination thing with the Jason. That's fantastic. I love... That's the, another really good thing in the film. Yeah, you play, you play, that, those are the ones where he actually gets to play something in the film, instead of just being blank-faced and, and introverted and everything. He actually gets to something to gra grapple with as an actor. I mean, it's like a regular <laughs> bed and breakfast here. Yeah. What is that tapestry with the cow in the back? <laughs> Where do you even find that? I do not know. It's like neon pink Native American yeah. uh, wild thing. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Stutterer. You gotta, you had to fit one in there. Or well, yeah, I mean, this is the eighties. She is, she is eighty. She's wonderful. <laughs> I love it, man. I, know, I just, I, I just love that kind of look. It is very attract to me. It's attractive in some way. All glammed up and everything. Yeah, it's definitely a great look. Yeah, it's a to total new wave <laughs> 80s. Don't set a plate for a dead person. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> That's a great line. Because obviously, you know, he's also <laughs> probably mentally challenged in some way. Yeah. And they tend to have less filter. <laughs> that should have been the tagline of the movie. <laughs> you don't set a place for a dead person. <laughs> I never understood. Somebody explain to me mm-hmm. why you take all of the orange juice and you put it in the a giant in the, with no in, lid. The, in the pitcher. Yeah. When, I mean, I, I guess is it fresh squeezed? Then I can understand. But like, take a long why would you, squeeze why that would much you take juice. why would you take the orange juice out of its original container just to put it in that container to make it look good for the the table? I never understood. <laughs> Which that. has no lid, so when you have to put it back in the fridge, right? You're screwed. Like, if it's fresh squeezed, okay, I get it, because you're going from oranges right into the... I don't buy it, like you yeah. said, I don't buy that there's that many oranges on this place. Yeah, no. It looks pretty similar to the mask that the kid had in 2, uh, with the, on the spear. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, see nice little takedown. Yeah. It's the good. Whole, it's the whole fake out of the film. You're they're trying to make it seem like Tommy is the killer because he's disturbed and he's violent and all this type of stuff. That would have been an okay plot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they they did choose the half ass. Maybe just because they wanted to have a twist of some kind. I don't know. Or they're just skittish about doing it in general. She is a delight. (laughs) He's a delight. He belongs at the Fawny Farm. You big dildo. It's a great line. (laughs) You can't fit that into every film. I know. (laughs) I really, really need to start incorporating you big dildo in my my insult repertoire. The looks you will get. This guy just shows up out of yeah. nowhere for no reason He's whatsoever. He's absolutely random and non non he's pointless. An excuse to have a scene. I don't even think he even dies in the film. He's just there just to have the scene go on right. a little longer. All we have to right. <laughs> Mysterious stranger. Looks like I guess he's been rolling around in the dirt for. I guess an hour. it's another red herring that he could nah, be the killer. That's weak sauce. Well, I know, but I, I know, I know. I'm, I'm s- not. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's weak sauce from the screenwriter to do that. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little late in the film to start doing red herrings. You gotta I guess. start. We're in. We're in Act Two. You need to start doing that in Act One, which you've already done. <laughs> the editing in this film is so weird. It's a little bit comedy edge to it. Yeah. A little punchy. A little punch liney. How long? Uh, well, I was going to say how long it'd take for someone to actually show up at the place, but it probably took a while for someone to actually come across the dead bodies. If it went from pitch black night to broad daylight. Roy Burns, the character, is mm-hmm. not a very tall man, so mm. that doesn't really fit mm. with the end game here. Mm. Now he's that doesn't stand out as taller than most people in the film. This was a favorite scene of mine as a child. Huh. I'm trying to do that stunt again this scene completely unnecessary yeah has nothing to do with anything <laughs> and is solely here just to kill yeah. two, two more people you have one character in the scene that you've seen before <laughs> that's a good line <laughs> that's I don't know. You, I love this kind of character. He's so sleazy. 
It's a teenager in a middle-aged man's body. <laughs> well, yeah, he's like 40. How old yeah. is this girl? I mean, she's supposed to be, what, 20? Yeah. Good probably... for him. <laughs> and why is she the only one here? Yeah. God, I loved this as a six-year-old watching this film, <laughs> or however old I was. <laughs> Hello. What is that, a, a, a can of beer that he's got there? In the... <laughs> little holder. It's like a Budweiser or something, maybe an off-brand thing. I was gonna do a coke. Strategically plays this strap so you don't see the logo. Yeah, it's Greek <laughs> to almost. He's got his little coke vial. Oh, here. you gotta get some cocaine. Oh, see, first appearance of cocaine in the franchise. At pot, now we graduated to cocaine because it's the '80s. God damn it! Okay. Well, right, you gotta, you gotta, gotta have cocaine. Time. Maybe Vice is on TV. You need some cocaine. You gotta seem relevant. Cocaine in the 80s are synonymous. <laughs> yes. Here's more singing. More this, singing. This is the second <laughs> instance of... <laughs> and he may have been doing a little <laughs> jingle in the car. I wouldn't old, doubt it. Old Billy. Coke Billy. <laughs> You didn't do a very good job of cleaning no, up. No, I was going to say. <laughs> you napkins on the counter. Silverware has been put away. Does she, like, own this diner? Why does she keep her uniform in the bathroom? <laughs> She's a fine catch. I'll say that. Not as good as... Not as not She's as, very 80s. Very 80s. I like the girl at the halfway house. She's much more beautiful, but... That nice neon lighting, I like that. A little moody. Look at that hair on the forearm. Oh. George the Animal Steel. Yeah, no Robin <laughs> Williams something. I don't know. <laughs> Good lord. You don't need all those clothes. You got a wool sweater on right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. Again, weird. I bet there was yeah. more to that. that got I, yeah, cut. I, was just, I was just saying there, there had to be some MPAA cuts in this thing. Look at there's fucking know there food are, on the counter. You bitch! Why don't filthy. you clean this place up? Yeah, there, there are definitely MPAA cuts because we'll, we'll get to one much later on. They had to be reshot. <laughs> Tiffany Helms scene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Like, I don't even understand what happened there. I saw the top of his head, yeah. I saw an axe, and then I saw bug eyes. Yeah, not, not even any blood come from the axe. It's just very, very clean. Obviously, no blood in the car either, because no. she just got in it. <laughs> All that happened to stay up right on the mirror? <laughs> now, for some reason, the door just won't open. <laughs> it never does. It never wants to. It, it never just... does. Oh. And she takes one right in the gut. Yeah. It's interesting that several of the victims have died via axe at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't like the axe kill. I, I, in general, I, I like the idea of the axe. Well, that's how Joey died, yeah. via the axe. Yeah, so, so that's poetic. Although the road flare didn't, I don't know. No, it's silly. It's a little, well, yeah. It's... And then it was a machete to the other guy in the car. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Another hallucination with the other mask. Mm hmm. So 
So obviously the direction was we're going to have mm-hmm. multiple masks in this film. Mm-hmm. But obviously we haven't actually we haven't actually seen the mask on the killer, the actual killer of the film. I don't no, think I don't we, think we have. Revealed, haven't revealed it yet. Angry mayor. Angry mayors are always good characters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he almost looks like Lee Ving from Clue. A, a little bit, yeah. In his later roles, he had gray hair and everything. It looks a little. Lot like yeah, us. that that could be uh, Mr. Body. Mr. Body, yes. <laughs> That's the same year as Clue. <laughs> Clue <laughs> is one of the greatest yes. movies of all time. <laughs> this is, yeah, Jason. This Blue. is interesting because he says they were he was cremated, but then he says They, they lay something in there to make it seem like they can't be Jason, but then it's like, oh, well, maybe not. Maybe it's just rumor or whatnot. But why would you create a rumor that you've been cremated if you hadn't been cremated? That seems pretty random. I mean, it's probably just as easy. Is that guy e- sleeping? It's probably honestly easier to just have him cremated than to bury him. So, so some people call that a, a continuity issue as the franchise continues after this. You have yeah, enough then continuity and congruities as it is. I'm not going to hold that against them. I mean, everything's hindsight, though, because at yeah. the time, there mm-hmm. wasn't thought of yeah, a one we, after this. Jason's dead. We're trying to build something different right now. Right. But it's interesting. The sheriff goes out there and like, were you there? Did you see it happen? Do you know for certain that it happened? So it was like, eh. A slight work around as you want it to be. A couple of slutty teens here. <laughs> Look at that shirt. Hers without his. a bra? No, oh. his. It's ex- Clash Day Explosion. And guess what? Tucked in with no fucking belt. And no sleeves either. <laughs> <laughs> wearing like loafers with no socks on either he's a hot mess I don't mind the shirt actually I actually don't I don't she's got her mom jeans on oh yeah I guess those were pretty hip in the 80s who really wants to go out in the middle of the woods and have sex well I guess I guess it's getting away from like you can't go into your room because that's where the adults are now you're right out in the open anyone can come wandering through there you know just it's not a hot idea, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I suppose. It's just probably more private than anywhere mm. else that they're going to get. Mm. There's some, some pot. Or is that just a regular cigarette? I can't tell. Uh, no, I think it is. I think it's a the old Actually, marijuana cigarette. <laughs> Oh, here's yeah. our drifter. Maybe he does get killed here. I, I feel like he does at some point. Mm. He's moaning a lot for, the, <laughs> for nothing having the, happening. Having right. their pants still on. Right. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Yeah. His uh, 50 seconds of screen time. Yeah, I don't even know if you finished cleaning out the chicken coop. <laughs> you gotta go wash up. Yeah, go wash up. You've been out here for like a minute. I can oh. sympathize with that. I don't want to leave those uh, beautiful, beautiful breasts alone. Where are you gonna wash up? Yeah. She's not bad looking. No. She's nice. I find it, knowing how the movie ends, Mm -hmm. I find it interesting 
like the first couple of kills with the random two boys and then yeah. the diner scene both happened at night. Mm-hmm. Like this guy has a day job. He's yeah. out working. Yeah. Like how would he be around right now to just mm-hmm. murder these people yeah. in the woods? And he's also wearing the Jason outfit as opposed to his yeah. regular everyday uniform, which is a bit uh, contrived. Because this is if this was not Friday, if this was any other film, he'd just be a regular killer without a mask. Right. But because it's Friday the 13th, he has to impersonate Jason. Because... she He couldn't because. hear her screaming. <laughs> really? Yeah. What did you take a dip in the river? Well, he said he was going to wash up. Oh, yeah, but... Wouldn't she need to wash you're, up you're more You're probably just him? as close to the, the freaking halfway house as you are the river. Why wouldn't they both go and wash up, quote-unquote... Yeah. Not quite. And again, they they cut away from mm-hmm. the full reveal of it. Oh, oh there, there it we is. Go. I feel like this would hurt a little bit. I, I th- and I think her death scene was cut too because I thought I remember seeing a photo of seeing like the actual like the scissors, shears. the shears in her eyeballs. Yeah. that's a kind of a cool visual. Yeah, this is nice too. Yeah, it's definitely MPA really starting to lean in on them heavy. Why is it that he's not going? <laughs> Demon. His name is Demon. <laughs> Demon. I want to know if that's his real name. Or when he adopted, because I want to hope it's his real name. Just name our kid Demon. And he said it was his brother, right? So, Mm -hmm. is that brother from another mother, where this guy's not Mm -hmm. also the grandpa? I don't know. Yeah, that's a great idea. Hey, Tommy. (laughs) Let's just... Big family reunion. (laughs) <laughs> Don't you want to go and hang out with these people that you've never met before? <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Introversion uh, Antisocial. Let's go meet new people. Tommy right. looks, looks like the kind of guy you just leave him alone. He reminds me of Mark Patton from A little bit. He's got Nightmare a little bit too. of that look, yeah. Mark Patton had more dialogue. This yeah. guy hasn't said, what, yeah. two sentences the whole show. Yeah. But they do have, a, uh, the two characters now you bring up, you do have a kind of a similar thing where they're both dealing with, like, very internal struggles and they're not, like, strong. He's tucked in with no belt, too. Oh, that's That's horrid. <laughs> he's got this big, thick waistband. That's terrible. Go ahead. But yeah, because because uh, Jesse and Tommy here both have this introversion thing where they're not strong heroes of the film. They're very much these victims who are kind of the main right. protagonists, but they can't really. They're not in control of the situation. They're not proactive in the whole film. So it's it's an interesting way to take the film, where you have your protagonist who's just this guy who's not an outward type of character. He's very closed in and whatnot. I like that the neon sign just said trailer park. <laughs> this isn't... When I think trailer park, I think like double lights. Oh, Whoa. Look at that black light stuff. Look at that outfit, man. It's straight out of, like, Michael Jackson or something. That Jerry Curl. Soul Glow! (laughs) Lubricated engine with that stuff. 
<laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Whoa! Hello, lady. I miss Anita. <laughs> I like that he calls her baby. <laughs> Like she's she's my girlfriend. Some, <laughs> hey, like I'm gonna trade up here, huh? <laughs> like he's not in a trailer. He's in a van. Yeah, he's in a van, baby. That's the way to roll. What else does he need in that thing? He's got everything. You don't need a trailer. You need a van. He's sure got an awful lot of junk food around. Oh, Egg yeah. rolls and the, pizza. The fuzzy and... dice. You gotta have fuzzy dice. <laughs> I just think if they're gonna go out of their way to call it a trailer park and show this neon <laughs> sign, that they should actually put him in a trailer. Huh. This man's gotta be on the move. I mean, if it's a campground, that's fine. He's in his van. <laughs> Even the neon sign puts him into a friggin' trance. A psychotic break of some kind. <laughs> Why, though? I don't remember any... No. This fucking guy. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, like, Randy Quaid or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even as a kid, I thought that this guy belonged in the mental house much <laughs> oh, yeah. more than most of these kids. <laughs> little straight jacket, rubber room. <laughs> the old leather, like, bomber helmet. <laughs> Is he wearing braces? Or is Something. that like gold teeth? What? Mm. It's like freaking Batman or something. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. At least he's Tommy knew to wear a belt this time. Yes. Jeez. Chuck Norris here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Yeah, he beat the shit out of him. <laughs> That's gonna piss old mama off. Oh, yeah. Didn't they just get there? <laughs> Look at that. It's just a van parked. He parked a van. <laughs> nice back. I'm so offended by this right now. <laughs> Nice backlighting on there. <laughs> uh oh. We're getting this... high and stoned, baby. The stomach cramps. Look at all. Is that all cocaine? I don't there? know. Those are wrappers from the I don't know. But... Here comes the little trots. Oh. <laughs> he's he's got to run to the, the shitter, which is apparently <laughs> all tin galvanized. Oh. <laughs> 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 Real high class here. <laughs> this is uh That's kind of nice back there. Behind him it says Faden was here, which is the name of the guy who did the axe murder. The Vic, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice little <laughs> you get it now, get it, bitch. Uh, I, <laughs> As if it's the first time he's ever been in there. Right. Yeah, he lives at the trailer park. I tell you what. Oh, here we go. 
I can't even ever. I, I don't very frequently go into a, a outhouse. Mm-hmm. It, if so, I don't take a shit in an outhouse. But mm-hmm. every time I go into an outhouse, I do start humming. Ooh, baby, <laughs> hey baby, hey baby, ooh baby. <laughs> it is synonymous <laughs> with outhouses. I can't even look at an outhouse without thinking, ooh, baby, hey, baby. <laughs> this movie did a number on me as a kid. <sighs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh. Oh. So I'm gonna beat you to it, demon. <laughs> How would you like to die in an outhouse? Oh, would that oh. be the worst? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't think he took time to oh. wipe his ass. Oh, that would be very painful. Oh. Knee oh. injuries are the worst. Oh, oh, it said Kilroy was here on the side Kilroy. of the. Says, do not write on the wall. Yeah. Oh! Right through the middle. Nice little tear to add in there, man. That's yeah. That's as a as the tear is good because the tear would have come from the the knee injury, right? It's nice poetry there. It's like Shakespearean. Yeah, I don't know. sure. <laughs> yeah, that man's an actor. <laughs> He's a fucking actor, right there, man. <laughs> Look out, Brando. I mean, stuttering is acting. Yeah. T- crying is acting. Oh, well, she gets more glammed up than yeah. the film. And what's goes wrong on. with this bitch? Why would they kill poor grandpa? <laughs> what would grandpa do to anyone, you know? Cooks a nice meal. He's nice to people. And does he live there? I can't imagine. Guess- I don't know. Like, obviously, so. Red, I mean, Reckless is visiting his grandpa, but yeah. I can't imagine that Gramps would live at this institute. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of things go unspoken in this film. <laughs> Passage of time. Uh, What's wrong with that girl on the right? Yeah. Nobody knows. Really, what's wrong with Brick Bundy's daughter? <laughs> no, she I don't just know. seems like a regular teenager yeah. to me. We should be hanging out at the mall, goddammit. This woman does an awful lot of cooking <laughs> for being, like, yeah. just a hillbilly in the woods. With having one person to cook for. Boy, he's pissed now. I just love that she's always yelling. <laughs> She's always yelling. <laughs> and now she's spit. In and the... she's got this huge freaking crock pot. And she's cooking for like 20 people or some shit. <laughs> but you murder them. <laughs> I mean, obviously. I want to know how this kid was raised. I want to see that film. I can't imagine. There we go. And good night. (laughs) God. (laughs) She's wonderful. You big dildo. (laughs) The size of that damn thing. Freaking pot. Beat you for a month. She wearing braces too. Oh, oh that's, ni- that's, that's awesome. That's nice. Yeah, that was good. That was a good shot. Yeah. It would have been nice to have it elaborated on a little bit. A little pro- bit. Probably would have. I'm, I'm sure the director sure, probably would yeah. have preferred that. Yeah. I wish. I wish that we could get some sort of like director's cuts and, yeah. and see some of this found footage. 
a lot of the stuff ends up being I mean like back in the 80s they just kind of dumped the stuff a lot of times they didn't feel like there was literally the storing. cutting room floor and they yeah. swept it away and threw yeah. it away yeah a lot of the stuff only exists in like a work print videotape master or something that looks like crap <laughs> there's a part 7 they've got those features on there extra features on the disc where they, they got the deleted footage but it's all videotape source right. and everything because they got nothing else the only one that came out uncut from the Paramount era was the first one because I think there was a less cut version overseas or something so they sourced it from that it's always a breakdown speaking of mm-hmm. bad VHS footage <laughs> I'm not familiar with this. What, yeah, I don't what know. film this is? Me neither. It's probably something from the Paramount Vault. All Stutterer is looking like he <laughs> wants to make a move. Yeah. <laughs> Even though, <laughs> in the storyline, they've all been living in this house for or this place. Oh, eight months, eight months now. Eight months. Nice timing. Um, and they picked right now when the cameras are rolling for him to make his move. <laughs> I missed all these dead bodies that are piling up in the right, town. Right, right, right. He's got frisky. Let, yeah, let's snuggle. There might not be much time left. <laughs> Yeah, he wants to be in the movies. <laughs> real bad. <laughs> She's not paying any damn attention. <laughs> no, she has no interest. No. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Poor kid. You need some pot to make it happen, you know? <laughs> and then she's just going to be a bitch and, <laughs> and just laugh right in his face? <laughs> The stuttering bastard <laughs> pours his heart out. <laughs> oh well, kid. Don't worry about it. You'll be dead soon. <laughs> He's crying. <sighs> Poor guy. Uh. Let's add in a thunderstorm just <laughs> for effect. Well, there's got to be a rain or a storm mm-hmm. or something. Well, it's the third act. You need it. Yeah, you got it. That's how you signal where the third act is. The rain. Yes. Yeah. Thunderstorm. What is she doing? Mm-hmm. Madonna poster sting. David Bowie, I think. <laughs> Trying to zone in on the art direction here. I can't see much. Oh, there you go. Again, no, a no, no show on the yeah, no anything. Blood. But there's we're up to like twenty people being dead here. Starting to feel that way. You had a good clip. And we ain't done yet. Oh, not even close. So a lot of stray characters roaming around this film. She's roaming around in a bathrobe. 
And he's got like a onesie pajama on. <laughs> yeah, he's done for the film. Not really, but... No. He'll sleep through mo- most of the kills. Well, he's a kid, so they, they're not going to kill him. No, no. Also, it's been a while since we've even seen Tommy. Probably because they're trying to lay the fact that maybe he's the killer. Well, again, did they... He didn't even come home, right? Mo- After he beat up the... He must have, because Reggie was with him, so Reggie came home. But then where's she? where the heck was she going? Look at that the wind, truck? the rain on the window. Yeah. The window. You know, at this point, she could just go up to him and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess she couldn't because he's dead. But uh, I was going to bring that up, but it seemed obvious. I'm just saying. <laughs> she doesn't know yet, but yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, the if she's Panther. changing her mind. It's the Pink Panther. Yeah. Can't bring those sheets up all the way. No, so you, so absolutely you, not. You, 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 gotta, you gotta leave something on the screen to watch, look at. But I'm saying, if she has remorse about mm-hmm. turning him down, she could just go to his room and yeah. offer herself or whatever. Yeah. Dumb. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. Really? He was there the whole time. It does not look like a big enough bed for two people to be laying in. No. And she didn't see him in the bottom bunk? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, Annie Lennox. A lot of Annie Lennox there. Prince, maybe? <laughs> I don't really understand this dancing. <laughs> Very new way. I have this song, you know. Pseudo Echo, His Eyes. It's on iTunes. Oh, I'm not familiar. <laughs> Is that Rick Springfield on the left? I'll come. Where is he hiding? I don't know. <laughs> those teleportation powers from part 8 showing up <laughs> is this what people do in their bedrooms at night I guess so it was the 80s it was new wave so you that she had to work with the, the hot curler or whatnot. get that yeah the crimper the crimper yeah there you go but yeah, this was the death that had to be reshot because it was the MPA said you're not getting away with this being uh, the uh, machete to the. Uh, Didn't they stick, nether he stick it up her, her vagina? Right. Yeah, it was it was just right right up the the crotch and everything, and it was no, they weren't going to let that go. So now we get taped right, out. Yeah. Close up shot of her face. I mean, it's creative, right? Yeah. Machete up the cooch. Yeah. Would have made an interesting visual. Yeah, I've I've seen the photo and everything. So, and I don't think you can call them nuts, by the way, reckless. <laughs> he's got this red jogging suit thing going on. Where the heck he's going? It's like a it's a one piece. Oh, it is. That's weird, and it's got a hoodie on it. <laughs> it's like pajamas. Strange. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh yeah. Now we get uh Roy Burns framing Tommy. Oh look at this. Just an orgy of death. <laughs> At what point would you not be <laughs> screaming and running out of there? Yeah.
Use your words. <laughs> Funny that the lightning struck right when she went in. Yeah. I mean, are we really supposed to? I mean, obviously the audience probably doesn't mm -hmm. believe that Tommy's the killer, but are they trying to set it up where they believe that Tommy's the killer? Ugh. Great through the door. Yeah, again. another another one like that. And here's here's the first face. Yeah, the the altered mask. I mean, I guess that makes sense, where mm -hmm. the characters believe that Tommy is the killer. Because mm -hmm. right after he shows up, <clears throat> every, everything starts going... Yeah, because, I mean, Tommy shows up in a few minutes here. That frenetic <laughs> score by Manfredini. Yeah. yeah. The strings and the... Yeah. Okay, so he does get killed good. Asshole. I thought he How was did he the show house? up there? Again, teleportation abilities manifesting. That kid can run. Yeah, no kidding. She obviously cannot. Well, she's in heels, too, so. Of course she is. Yeah, some heeled boots. Where's he going? Like, I never understood. Let's just run into the woods to get away. How about you run on the road? He was right by a road. Run down the road. You might see another car. Instead of going ass over tea kettle into the poison ivy. <laughs> he got killed off screen. Yeah. A little tent spike through the just the brain. And who knows that may have been a cut that they filmed mm, it. Possibly. She seems like an unlikely survivor girl. Mm -hmm. But she is smarter but, than the broad. Oh, you can see her titties there. Yeah, Cute. yeah. I imagine so. Oh, through oh, the window. There we go. That's a classic gag. Yeah. Oh, oh, Grandpa! Gouge his eyes out for no reason. Because you're a psychotic maniac. Nobody really ever wore a bra in the 80s, did they? <laughs> Apparently not. But yeah, I mean, at least she's been the most compassionate character we've had in the film. She hasn't been an asshole to anyone. She has been, like, selfish or arrogant or egotistical. She's been caring to everyone. I agree. So, I mean, it makes sense to have her to this point because you can be sympathetic with her because she's been sympathetic with other characters. And plus, I think she's the best looking lady in the film. <laughs> <laughs> so you're biased. I got it. <laughs> Stop screaming! Uh. This is a little silly. A little bit, yeah. yeah. He sees him coming a mile away. It just stands there doing shit.
At least he put his hood up. Yeah. Oh, it's over! And it's all over. They even, they're even playing the happy music. <laughs> he's bald! Look at that! Did you see that? Well, because he's got more uh, Tommy's masks on. They get, he, oh, that's right. Yeah. It's a very elaborate scheme. He's... Yeah, it is pretty. He goes crazy, decides to sneak into Tommy's place to steal one of these masks. He doesn't even realize that Tommy even owns. And then somewhere finds a hockey mask and that coveralls. We probably already had coveralls or something, maybe. Who knows? Creates this entire costume or whatnot to come up, to be Jason, everything. It's very convoluted. It is extremely. <laughs> In fact, Jason never wore coveralls. That's Michael Myers. Yeah. You put the other mask on him, he's Michael Myers. He even built a little bit more like Michael because Jason was always a little bit more kind of like bulky or whatnot. Yeah, this guy's pretty more, thin. A lot more slim. Morgan was a very slim guy. Whose barn is this? Why is there a barn in this halfway house? I mean, we saw a sheep. We did see a sheep. That's, That's about correct. it. You don't need a whole barn for There's one There's no sheep. horses or nothing else. Of course, in part three, they, they had a barn and they had no wild, they had yeah. no animals. So, I don't know. Came with the property. I guess. Oh, there uh, we go. The old chainsaw, sure. <clears throat> chainsaw machete fight. Of course, not the first time we had a chainsaw in the franchise. Ginny used one in the second film, but... Still nice. No. Oh, of course. Of course. Just like every car... Yeah. Nothing ever stays. Out of right. gas. It's so also convoluted that he never shows any hesitation mm -hmm. to kill anybody else in the in yeah. earlier in the film. It's always an immediate yeah. strike. Mm -hmm. There's Tommy. Oh, so it's not the same guy. And then... But here, it's always been a... Like, oh, I'm gonna... I'm thinking about killing you! Mm -hmm. So now, why is it... Yeah, this, this... Like, Tommy seeing Jason would obviously trigger something in Tommy. Yeah. But Jason has this or this person playing Jason has no history with Tommy. Right, because I'm thinking it's like the filmmakers are trying to create an illusion here, but you look back on it from just a few minutes later in the film where you reveal everything, it doesn't... It doesn't, doesn't add up. doesn't add into the context. This is not actually Jason Voorhees. This is some other guy pretending to be Jason who's just using the cover of Jason and and trying to frame Tommy for everything. And there, there's like, everything else has been a kill strike. Now he just kind of wounds him. Right. So it's like, eh. That's kind of what the point and that he's, I was getting he's at. he's taking a sweet time of it, too. And it's like, yeah. Right in the freaking thigh. Mm. 
What happened to his axe? Yeah. They didn't leave the axe inside someone. Yeah, he did. The, uh... The waitress. Yeah, I think I so. I think. Yeah. That doesn't make much sense. Why you leave your weapon on right. with, with your no. fingerprints yeah. on it? Yeah, you dummy. <laughs> you dummy. You, uh, you big dildo. <laughs> <laughs> you, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> He got a piece of his ear missing. <laughs> oh dear. Hide and seek. Now, why wouldn't he just reach out and kill him? <laughs> he killed Grandpa, might as well kill the grandson. And he, he killed Demon. He killed the whole family. Yeah, obviously he didn't care. He just would kill anybody yeah. in those two poor kids from Jersey <laughs> who were just sitting on the yeah. side of the road. And here's our Bugs Bunny mm -hmm. moment. What even is that gadget? Mm. They didn't even show the impaling. They didn't even show him falling, for crying out loud. He couldn't have thrown a dummy off the frickin' barn for a two-second shot. Oh, maybe he's, like, hanging on for Oh, the there we go. Yeah, okay. there's a false finish. Yeah. Uh, That's why. It's our hero of the film. Kind of stands he around just, does, I, I he can't kind of get over. stands around and does nothing until like the last minute of the I can't film. get over how yeah. few lines he has. Yeah, again, it's... It, it's it, it feels very duplicitous of not knowing exactly what to do with the character. They're trying to set it up like maybe he's the killer, but you're also he's also the protagonist of the film, but he's also not very active in the plot of the movie. How did that fall rip the mask off the front of his face? Yeah, I don't know. That's very... <laughs> Convenient storytelling. So you're there, you go down and have this Scooby Doo moment. Four few darn kids. Yeah, I was gonna say. You would have gotten away with it too. More rent a cops. Yes. And outfit looks a little small on him. A little tight. Tucker. Doesn't it usually have your title? Yeah. Like, like sheriff, deputy or... Sheriff or whatnot. He's around a photo of himself. <laughs> well, sometimes. In his work outfit. You're right, it is a very Scooby-Doo ending. <laughs> So, I guess this is 
we should start talking now about mm-hmm. the, the legacy of this film and how yeah it was all just a big ruse mm-hmm. and Jason's really dead still mm-hmm. this is from part four the guy's tent and everything but yeah I mean there's, there's a lot of things why people just had a negative aversion to the film that again you're you're kind of setting up one thing but it turns out to be a different thing but you don't is you're not getting to where you want to either you're saying jason's back or you're trying to set up tommy's a killer and then ultimately it's neither one of those things it's a completely different thing that really amounts to nothing but i'm okay with it but the characters are yeah i'm okay with it i think this is fun it's a fun movie Mm mm-hmm I mean, we got into the you know the mid '80s, and it was all about just the slashers, and mm-hmm. the, and it was popcorn flicks, and mm-hmm. I mean, past the popcorn, and yeah. let me just enjoy getting watch people getting butchered. Yeah. And again, again, uh, going back to what we were saying, this, this was actually the same year as Freddy's Revenge, '85. Yeah, these two similar protagonists coming out in these franchise films. Isn't it crazy? They're to both think- kind of thought of kind of like black sheep of the franchise in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. It's a little over the top acting. A little bit. Yeah, it's too much. I know. And another, another, another fake dream. Out. Yeah. And also, yeah, the, the film was really indulgent with these fake outs. really no honest effect because so you have the dream sequence where he is homicidal there and then you just pretty much end the beat on a slightly different different note with the same thing because he shows up behind her yeah and the mask and everything so it's like you're teasing the same thing twice right and there's the original yeah. mask or at least with the, more closely the original yeah the more proper wardrobe. Yeah, so it's like, did they, mm-hmm. did this whole movie swerve or get you, get him to become the Jason? Yeah. Like, like he wasn't, but this is like, oh, now he is. This is like origin story of the maniac in a certain way. Yeah. Like, Yeah, I mean, logically, none yeah. of it fits, yeah. but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. It does feel like this is going on forever. And, and ever. how does he have the mask from Roy? That's the other question. Wouldn't this be in the hands of the it, police, police right Police evidence! Now? It's police evidence. Unless it's that whole dream within a dream thing. Mm. Richard teasing here with almost like the exact same shot of her walking down the hallway and everything. There's that wind machine mm-hmm. really going nuts again. Yeah, that's, that's high volume, man. That's the industrial stuff. Yeah, so then, I mean... So he is the A-killer. That's what the... So, again, makes the the dream sequence completely kind of pointless, because... He He could have just had that. Right. You have the dream sequence where he ends up being a killer, then he kicks out of the thing, and then he ends up being the killer anyway. Yeah, they could have just (laughs) done one or the other. They probably realized... We've cut so much footage out of this film for the MPA, we gotta tack on something extra. We gotta pad out the ending. Uh, I'm, I'm I mean, okay it, with it, it, it's a flawed film in a lot of cases. Yeah, but, but it, it's, it's fun. It's cheesy. It, I it's, love it. I don't know. 
People can hate on it all they want. <laughs> I still had a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's things that have stuck with me all these years. It's a film that can, uh, the kind of the more you watch it, the the easier it is to kind of get into it and let enjoy yourself, it. yeah, suspend disbelief or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. Because I imagine if you're going into the, the theater in 85, you've seen the last four films saying, oh, well, they're making another one. They're still going to continue it on. You're kind of amped up for seeing Jason back and all this type of stuff. And like Well, I right. Said, I mean, these poor the film people. film leads you along on different little paths and whatnot and hit you with something different at the end. So it's like you're going with a lot, a lot of hype and expectations and whatnot, and you feel like mm, that's not really what either you're teasing me with or really what I wanted to see in the film. Yeah, the whole end of the film is, is definitely a swerve, so I could see why people were kind of knee-jerk reaction, not liking it at the time. Yeah. When you, yeah. But when you years later, if you're just sitting down and watching everything on VHS or you watch like a Cinemax marathon or whatnot, like you, you can get more into it because you're just flowing through the things one or another. Right. But I mean, yeah, these people went into the the cinema thinking that four was the last one. Yeah. And it made so much damn money. Why why stop? Right, and so you know, oh man, Jason's back. Let's yeah. go watch the new, yeah. the new one. And you get to the end, and you're like, oh wait, it wasn't Jason. But that kind of works because now they're still not liars because yeah, he mean, still died in the I fourth mean, still one. At the end of the previous one, they they right that last shot where the Corey and everything that, that weird shot is like, there's something wrong with this kid now. Right. Definitely. Right. You got to follow up on that somehow. I was like, okay, what was that all about? So it's really mm-hmm. part six where it goes off. Because they heard all the, the people, again, the knee-jerk reaction stuff, people like, oh, we didn't care, we didn't like that. Even if it did make, it did make bank. But you know, if you get the reviews and the fans saying all this stuff, just like, been out of shape after only seeing it once, they, they were going to course correct to do something different. Yeah, I don't know. So six is where it really kind of goes off the rails. And I don't know, I don't know if they rails. would have made another, what, six, seven, Friday the 13th films with Tommy recasting him in the premium, premium, premium no. every time no. I wouldn't have worked no so. it would not have but well anyway thanks for listening thanks for listening we'll be back soon with Jason Lives very Ooh, soon baby hey baby <laughs> hey baby I love that song <laughs> see, you, see you next time guys bye <laughs>